and lower level of control and upper level of monitoring and upper level of control. So these nowadays are uh, defined and set in the, uh, the, the software that we use. So these processes are continuously monitored and they are controlled on the basis of monitoring. However, if the processes are going right in the right direction, we need to be watchful that they remain in the right direction. And this is what we call controlling the business or the production or services or whatever activities we are performing. Controlling powers are by different levels of managers. Could you enlighten us with one different management level? We have four levels, three being of management and one a non-management level. This is only a rough division. We have top managers who must also be leaders and who must have a broad vision and who must be looking at the whole organization. And there are middle level managers who have uh, sections or departments under them. And uh, we have uh, first level managers who manage at uh, shop floor level where work is taking place and uh, they arrange the work among the workers and their leaders and groups and these are all management levels and the fourth where the work is taking place is non-management because the authority is delegated by the top managers to the middle level and middle level managers devolve authority and also responsibility to the first line managers and along with the delegation of powers comes the responsibility and accountability. Now what to delegate and at what times and how to make them responsible for achieving tasks at their levels and uh, what should be the level at the first uh, line of uh, managers that is above the workers that is uh, it varies from industry to industry according to the nature of the organization. Can we reduce the span of control of these managers at these levels or can we reduce these levels? Many a times we need to reduce these levels and sometimes we may also need to increase these levels but mostly due to rising technologies and due to new processes we have to rearrange managerial levels. What is this phenomenon restructuring? Why is it done? I mean has it something related to cost, efficiency or both? The whole problem of managerial levels and reducing or increasing them is sometimes called uh, restructuring and mostly it is done to increase profits or to increase efficiency. There are mergers of departments, there are uh, shifting of people from one to another uh, section and uh, there are sometimes great changes which we call paradigm shift and still greater changes which we call restructuring and sometimes there is a sea change which we call re-engineering which means that we do away with all the present structure and try to rearrange the processes and the people and the sections in a new way and that is not only restructuring but also re-engineering and mostly it is all for the purpose of getting more profit and increasing of our efficiency and reducing the costs, which means staying competitive in the present competitive world. Apart from these, is it possible to achieve some other purposes 
from restructuring? As we saw in the previous slide, restructuring could also sometimes result in the form of downsizing, which is a bit dangerous because that creates great discontent among the working people. And now in the new structures, since there are new ways uh, of delegating powers, so we call it empowerment. And sometimes we have to empower uh, people at uh, lower levels. And that is what the quality people nowadays say, that the, even at the level of workers, we must empower them to make some decisions at least at their own levels. Similarly, there is a trend nowadays to create groups and teams and make team leaders uh, and uh, also they should all be working in consonance and it has been found that it greatly increases their efficiency. So now there are studies of uh, group dynamics also which we'll be taking up in coming sessions. Managerial work is of varied nature and you know that manager has to play roles accordingly. What are the roles expected to play by manager at different times? A manager has to play interpersonal roles, he has to play informational role and he has to play decisional role. Now interpersonal is of course between persons. He has to negotiate with the clients and of course he has to say a lot of things to his juniors and subordinates and uh, also he has to uh, communicate various orders from above or policies and uh, these are all interpersonal roles. He has to negotiate with the, the union also and he has to bargain with the uh, outside clients and uh, this, is, this needs great skill of negotiation also which is a part of interpersonal role. Sometimes he has to discuss things with the discontented uh, subordinates and uh, that also needs a skill of discussion and persuasion. Now he has also to play informational role which means he has to convey lots of information coming from above and going down and he has to mediate about the information going from below to upward and he has to also disseminate information at uh, a horizontal level to other departments which may be providing supportive services or who are in working in coordination with the, his department. Now, this needs creation of an information system and a system of data flow. This has been nowadays largely managed in software also because the information flow is a part of MIS, Management Information System. Now the decisional role is making decisions, making decisions about what, making decisions about uh, new uh, bargains, new deals, making decisions about purchasing new machinery, replacing old machinery or maintaining the present machinery and not buying the new one and also making decisions about uh, the placement of people the promotion of people and uh, also if there is some sort of uh, uh, what we were talking about re-engineering or restructuring so he has to make all these decisions and he has also to make decisions about purchase of raw materials maybe and also about uh, the supplies, the procurement, the warehousing and lots of other functions that are performed in any industry or any uh, services organization. So all these are the roles played by the manager and maybe at various times and maybe all these roles at the same time. It seems that manager must be adept in playing interpersonal role 
including interpersonal communication, as he has to act and to contact with a lot of people. This, we have discussed that the interpersonal roles are the role that he plays with the, the other managers, with the workers, with the, the clients, and inside his own organization, the manager is a figurehead. The manager is also uh, plays a role of a leader, and he also plays a liaison role that is getting together people, linking them, and uh, creating links to the maximum efficiency of the industry or the business. So the, he is a figurehead also, so he has to uh, take people along to convince them, to educate them, to arrange trainings for them, and uh, to see to their welfare. So this is being a figurehead. And being a, a leader also requires that he should lead people in crisis, and he should also be able to lead them from uh, lower levels to higher levels. And uh, also playing liaison role means that he has to link all the people and all levels uh, so that the maximum uh, efficiency could be achieved and also the effectiveness of attaining the objectives could also be achieved. That is being a liaison man. Now, before we wind up, let us have an overview of what we have learned today. We have learned management, organization, goals. We learned about uh, management levels. We learned about the roles a manager plays at different times. And we also learned the manager as uh, the liaison man, manager as the communicator, and manager as the leader. With that, we come to the end of this program. Thank you, expert. Thank you, Thank students. You. Goodbye. Thank you.